Good afternoon, my name is Drew Moore with Advanced Trading. Today I have Nate Duraco, Commercial Advisor, and Brian Basting, uh, Economist, uh, for us here. And we're gonna debrief the June USDA stocks and acreage report. Nate, first question for you, what stood out today? I'd say in, a, uh, in what has been a very uh, volatile year, the USDA did not disappoint today. Um, <laughs> big thing that stood out was the acreage, kind of as people expected. Maybe a little bit of the opposite though direction. So they came out with 92.7 on acres, up slightly from the March intentions, but a little over a million acres below the average trade guess. Well below some of the high side numbers that were up in the 96, 97 million acres, again at 92.7. Beans, same thing, um, 87.6. About 1.5 million acres below the average trade guess. Um, kind of in line with the March intentions, but uh, that was the shocker today for sure. Absolutely. Stocks not, not as much of a play on the stock side. D's corn up 40 cents right now. Uh, soybean, uh, no, November soybeans up 80 cents right now. Um, so appreciate that commentary. Brian, question for you. What, what about wheat? What did you see on the, on the wheat balance sheet today? A bit surprising, Drew, because the acreage for hard red spring, the trade was looking for lower acreage for hard red spring wheat compared to what it was in March. However, USDA only cut the hard red spring acres 100,000 acres from what it was in March. We actually saw acreage increase 350,000 acres in North Dakota, but decline in Minnesota and Montana. Obviously, a lot of distressed uh, fields up there with a the drought, so I'm not sure the acreage is uh, going to make that big a difference, but it's something worth noting here as you get closer to critical critical weather time sure sure so now that we have the the corn and soybean uh, acreage numbers from the USDA here what does that look like in terms of balance sheet for for corn and soybeans going into the 21 22 marketing year it really has made weather critical to state the obvious Drew because we looked at actually the soybean acreage today was fractionally below what it was in March I think the market's going to send as strong a signal as possible to plant double crop beans that is the last hope of, of increasing acreage if you will, compared to what we are expecting in the spring. Sure. The corn acreage is also lower in expectations. Obviously, that door is closed now, but it does put all the emphasis on the weather, not only here in the U.S., but also we've got the tail end of the Brazil growing season. Sure. There's been some cold weather this week that may trim back those Safrinha corn yields. Sure. And we've also got critical weather we want to watch in Ukraine. So as Nate said a moment ago, a lot of volatility ahead of us. Sure, sure. Nate, we, we've done a good job managing the inverses here. Um, we've got two months left essentially in the, the marketing year. Um, you know, as we move along the forward curve, uh, what do you think uh, about you know, corn and soybean basis uh, and how it relates to spreads here? Sure, well, I think, I think the report's gonna be interesting, obviously with the limit up move today, uh, or the, the outcome here is gonna be interesting with the limit up move. So far, not seeing a lot of cash movement. We're kind of waiting on the farmer to re-engage both on the last you know, 10, 15% of old crop and start to, to sell a little bit of new crop again. I think the wind out of the sails of the acre outlook here is probably gonna put a little more emphasis on the tail end of the Brazil crop, like Brian said, and really what our exports look like over the next two months to in this marketing year and then right into Q1 of the, uh, of the fall of the next marketing year. Because without that cushion, um, we haven't run through our entire balance sheet, but I would guess without the upside of the acres, we're going to be below a billion bushel carryout on our corn balance sheet currently, um, and probably getting tight below 100 million on beans as well. And the rest of the world just not providing any alternative to that, at least the first part of, of the next marketing year, um, outside of some of the wheat feeding. But I think it's going to be... We'll see how much the river and the processor market here has to come back and say, if it's really, the acres aren't there, I think I need to own a little bit more of this in the, in the last part of this crop year, um, and then start to see how aggressive they wanna get for next crop year. Not a bearish basis spread statement, I would say, just in general, um, via what the balance sheet's gonna print here. Thank you very much. Appreciate both your guys' time today. Thanks.